from us. Thank you. Miss Graham. Yes. Sir Michael would like to see you in his study. Okay. Alone. Miss Alicia. I'm offering you my heart. And I wish to return it with all of mine. But I cannot be blind to the advantages of such an alliance. I have always been selfish. Lucy, do you dislike me? Dislike you? Oh, no. Then is there anyone else whom you love? I love no one in the world. I dare say I'm an old fool, but if you don't dislike me and you don't love anyone else... Is it a bargain, Lucy? Yes. And I shall be content. Like other men of my age. To be married for my fortune and position. As God is my judge, I shall be a good wife to you. Drudgery, no more humiliation. Buried and forgotten. Hey, what's the hurry? To my way. Good Lord. Robert Audley. Duffield. Still wearing the same suit, I see. <laughs> Where have you been? Australia, with my friend George Starboys. Good day. As you can see, George has done rather well for himself. Give me that. George? It was all for Helen and the child. You're a martyr. Sorry, George, I know you've missed them. Every minute of every day. I know. I could only afford a single passage. There was a baby. It was a desperate stroke, Bob. I'd promised myself I'd either make my fortune or never trouble her again. George, I understand. Well, come on. Let's get you off to Wildensea. And while I've been swanning around, my fool of an uncle's got married to the damn governess. So I'm not the only one who's made a success of gold digging. <laughs> <laughs> They have knocked any of the bounce out of you. <laughs> it's not the one to try. Oh, I thought we'd never see you again. Well, there comes a point when it ceases to be an adventure anymore. Just hard work. And we all know how you hate hard work. <laughs> Did you miss me? I missed everything. Come on, come meet Lucy. <laughs> so, just like Cinderella, you've acquired a wicked stepmother. Mm, not you as well. There isn't a spinster in the county that didn't fancy herself as Lady Audley. <laughs> They've all been bitterly disappointed. Hello. You must be Robert. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I should leave you two to talk. Bob, you've got those chambers. You ought to work. Yes, but don't you see, though, if I did, I might be depriving someone who actually needs the money. You never told me Robert had a social conscience. Come on, Bob. Things have changed. 
Um, I hope you don't mind. I invited my friend George Tarboys down. But you've only just arrived. Supper is served, Sir Michael. Thank you, Mariner. It won't be for a week or so. He's gone up to Yorkshire to see his wife and son. Uh, Lucy. Lady Audley. My darling. What will become of me when I'm old? What will become of any of us? Is that everything, my lady? Yes, my dear, thank you. Phoebe, come here. You know you can still count on me. Nothing has changed. Phoebe! This friend of Robert's. George Townboys. Uh, met in the goldfields. Uh, thick as thieves now, apparently. Do we know the family? Mm. Damn nuisance. Rather concentrate Bob's attention on Alicia. Shall we have a wager? Shall we see if I can give you a son by the time they marry? next week. I want to make a good impression. I hope you understand it is important to me. Well, I'll need a new dress from London. Southampton, first class, please. Are, madam. Thank you. charitable institution, Mrs. Carlson. But the child! Dying. There's nothing I can do to prevent it. <laughs> Not enough time. It has to be. So long as you do what I tell you. Are you frightened of me? I won't let you live like this. One thing I've learned in my new life, it's simply a matter of money. A 
it's quiet without Lucy. Mm. And now with Robert gone. You should have gone up to town too. When's the last time you bought a new dress? Men appreciate the sort of effort she goes to. You need to wake your ideas up, Alicia. Bob's not just going to fall into your lap. Not a trace of her in Yorkshire. Not a damn thing. People don't just disappear. She must have relations. Just her father. Bob, mm -hmm. look at this. Heavens. Almost the same colour as my new aunt. You wait till you see her, George. I've known beautiful women, but um, I've never encountered such perfection, such fragility, such... On the 24th instant at Ventnor, Isle of Wight, <laughs> Helen Halboys, aged 22, beloved daughter of Captain Henry Melton. <laughs> That's for deserting her. I did not desert her. Just tell us what happened. There's not a lot to tell. Her father brought her here from Southampton a couple of days before she died. I knew at once she was past saving. Well, what was it? Consumption. She just faded away. Did she mention me at the last? No. She passed away like a lamb. Captain Morden. Where's Henry? What do you care? Decent of you, Bob. But I'm not fit for company. I've got to find the child. George. Oh boy. It's Robert. Steady. Robert. Someone's. I think that must be his friend. George is here. Uh, Lucy. Mariner, come quickly. Help Lady Orphan. Well, Lady. Good, good. Well, there's no cause for anxiety. But is there a child? It's still too early. Hmm?
Don't be angry with me. I want to see a doctor in town tomorrow. What about Bob? I can't cope with guests at the moment. Of course. I'm sorry. Listen, Bob. I really do appreciate the effort you've made. I just feel I ought to be um, making a bit more of an effort to find a child. on to Robert for me. Of course. Are you sure you feel well enough? Yes. This is your chance, Alicia. Get rid of Mr. Talboys and just concentrate on Robert. <laughs> charging off to London. Does it matter? Well, but I thought perhaps you'd come down to see me. Well, of course, Alicia. Come on, George, we'll make the new train. You're not leaving. Wouldn't Mr Talboys like to see the rest of the house? I'd be delighted. You can see my aunt's new portrait, George. Go on. Oh, well, that's that. Not a bit of it. Follow me. stuff still here. I remember you on this. So you do think about me sometimes then? You're part of my life for this year. You know that. I'll go first. Come on. After you, George. Dreaming. Yes. I don't want you to distress yourself about the
Robert. The paintings are in here. Coming. A face to die for. Too impressed, are you, George? George? see any harm. Didn't see any harm. These are my rooms. They're not a public art gallery. Now get out. Get out! Yeah, tall, clean shaven. Certainly sounds like George. Did you speak to him? Didn't get a chance. As soon as he saw me, he was off like a hare. I gave chase. Well, I thought he was a poacher, but I lost him in the storm. Robert, what are you thinking about? Oh, um, my friend George. That's not very flattering. Well, George and I went through hell together. And the marriage unscathed. Get off. Come here. Get off. <laughs> <laughs>
pour ça. Luke. One of these has set us up for life. Oh, yes. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to hear? Please, don't hold last night against me. I was desperately overtired. You've hurt yourself. It's nothing. Not Beethoven. It's like being caught in the middle of an avalanche. Nothing sad. I don't want to think about anything sad tonight. What about that little piece you played the other night? Oh, yes. I'm quite sure you'll find Mr. Talboys in London. More likely he went to Southampton to see his father-in-law. I imagine he's looking for his son. Hello? No, Luke. What have we here? A baby's shoe? Well, well, well. Southampton immediately. Right away. Captain Malden, where did he go? Did he go to see his son? George came last night. He stayed. How long did he stay? Yes, that's what I'm asking you. Liverpool. Liverpool? He sails for Australia tonight. C can I offer you? I've only got rum. No, thank you. It doesn't make any sense. He didn't say anything to me. He's left everything at my chambers. Tall boys came last night. To Liverpool, sailing for Sydney. George told me he met your daughter in Yorkshire. In Wildensea. After he left, we came. If I can help it, should you? It turns out that there is no reason why not. Can't my uncle be dissuaded from wasting his money like this? It was my suggestion. The men need the work since Lord Cumnor gave up his improvements. And the tenants can look after themselves. But the estate cannot. And I'm worried about the tenants. It will be winter soon. I know what it is to lack fuel and warm clothing. It is unreasonable to hint at an interesting past and then... Um, well, you hardly need to 
enhance your allure by wrapping yourself in mystery? No mystery, merely a reluctance. My childhood was not as blessed as yours. Your parents? Both my parents are dead. Mine too. Then we were both saved by Sir Michael. When I first received the news of my uncles, I have to confess I was skeptical. Like most of society? The term governess summons up, um... Well, nothing prepared me for your extraordinary beauty and accomplishments. You really are a remarkable woman. And? <laughs> I was expecting more compliments, Mr. Audley. I would value your opinion on something. It's a telegram I found. See here. That's Tower Boys. Now, why would George refer to himself in the third person? I'm flattered you should confide in me, but I can't see what conclusion. The George never left England. You see, I made inquiries. He wasn't registered on any ship leaving Liverpool. I doubt he even got as far as Southampton. Yes, but what about... Captain Walden was lying, as he was instructed to do. I can't think of what else to do. I've spoken to his friends, advertised in the newspapers. Absolutely nothing. Look! You know, the only way that you're going to find out what really happened to Mr. Talboys is by going out to Australia after him. I told you George is still in England, I'm sure of it. And besides, I had good reason not to leave Audley Court. If you mean Alicia, I agree with you. Good morning. About your prospects, Bob, things haven't really changed, you know. Of course, we all hope that Lucy was with child. Now it turns out not to be the case. Well, it's, um, it's on the cards, though, isn't it? Well, I consider it unlikely. Don't forget, Alicia was an only child. Lucy's made me happier than I ever dared imagine. If she does present me with an heir, well... Well, obviously. She doesn't, however. Full enjoyment of the estate will be held in trust for Alicia's son. It would give me pleasure to think that you would be the father of that child. I know that your friend's disappearance has distracted you. Oh. Bob, what are you playing at? I'm afraid it's getting a little late in the year for me. Don't keep Alicia out too long. I'm thinking of opening up the West Wing. There's a good set of rooms up there. No other way of saying it, really. Other than, will you marry me? Of course. Cornflower, it would bring out your eyes. What would he care? What's this? What are you doing in here? Get out! More cast-offs? We well, don't reckon on doing any more governessing, eh? Phoebe has told me that you intend to marry. I have told her oh, that no, I will... Sold her. Fifty pound. That ain't much. You'll make it an hundred, my lady. I certainly shall not. How dare you! Money doesn't matter. But I want those things back. And you'll promise that you will not marry Luke. I can't refuse. Do you think that being his wife will make you any safer, Phoebe? I have seen.
seen the consequences of a bad marriage at first hand. I was very fortunate I rose in the world. And with my help, you can too. Luke will only drag you down with him. I cannot believe that you would rather. Take the dresses and get out. Well, you know what they say about a fool and his money. She was the governess, you know. Mary. Audley. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Mr. Audley seems preoccupied tonight. Would you consider a month in it? Hard work entertaining, isn't it? Excuse me. Coming out tomorrow, Audley? Hunting. I'm afraid I failed to see the appeal of Flogging across a muddy field after some mangy, half-starved animal. You ever ask yourself what he makes of it? Well, sometimes the fox hunts, sometimes he's hunted. He accepts his fate. No hunted animal accepts his fate. Light. 
That's a good one with it. This is the last. Thank you, my lady. One more thing. If I hear that you are mistreating Phoebe, I will... How I deal with my wife is my own affair. That elusive friend of yours, George Talboys. Sir Harry's a neighbour of his. Well, of the family, anyway. I haven't seen George since he made a fool of himself over that little fortune hunter. Careful what you say, Sir Harry. Robert is oversensitive on the subject of Mr. Talboys. Well, no offence, old man. Anyway, it was Mrs. Talboys who was made the fool of. As I heard it, he just deserted her. He did nothing of the kind. Where everything he did in Australia, he did for her. Dear me. I never realized that men were capable of such deep and lasting affection. I thought one pretty face was as good as another. And that when number one, with blue eyes and fair hair, died, they had but to look for number two, with brown eyes and black hair, by way of variety. George isn't like that. His wife's death broke his heart. How sad. It seems almost cruel of Mrs. Talboys to die and grieve her poor husband so. No one can question Mr. Talboy's constancy. No one, it appears, is allowed to. Mr. Talboy shines down on all of us like a saint in a church window. Lucy. <laughs> if you knew George. If you had known Mrs. Talbot. Did you know her? Of course not. I just want to see justice done, that is all. I almost wondered if you weren't trying to avoid him. <laughs> Your sudden trip to London. If it hadn't been for Alicia, he'd have never have known how lovely you were. <laughs> Tensions tiresome. Come on, man, get on with it. Luke, what have you done? What? You look tired. I was out early. Satisfying my curiosity about two former servants with no visible means of support. I think Alicia was looking for you. If only you would trust me. I do trust you, Robert. I trust you not to do anything that might distress your uncle. 
I can see why Alicia loves you. You're a very handsome man. Turn your head for me. Just a little towards the light. George left some effects at my chambers. Perhaps it's time I looked at them. Letters from his family, I suppose. And from his wife. Are you sure you didn't know her? Quite sure. Have you ever studied the theory of circumstantial evidence? No. Small things, insignificant things, tiny threads collected here and there but weave them together and they make a rope strong enough to hang a man. Or woman. What do you know, Robert? Nothing. But I know what you want, and it isn't justice for George. He sold him a lady. It doesn't matter. What do they prove, anyway? Then why, uh... I remember my friends. You were right about Luke. Oh, God. Be quiet and let me think. Do you want your opposition back? Do you? Then get your cloak then. At once. I need you to go to London. Alicia, I really must know your answer. I'm sorry. But I'm engaged to Mr. Audley. It doesn't look that way from where I've been standing. Saddle my horse, now. Good day, my lady. What's that fool Bob waiting for? I thought it was all settled. You seem to have some influence over him, Lucy. I am rather a young aunt for such a nephew. Don't be silly, Lucy. You mustn't hate me, Robert. The last few months have been difficult for us all. My pregnancy... Supposed pregnancy. Can't we be friends? A woman like you... What sort of a woman is that? You're a man of the world, Robert. We can be nothing to each other. Oh, we must be everything. We understand each other. Alicia loves you and your uncle. You must accept certain responsibilities. So Michael wants it. I want it. Do this for me, and yes, you'll find I have ways of showing my gratitude. Everywhere. This can't go on. Lucy. 
you see. For God's sake. Robert. I think he's... It's Mr. Tallboys. Robert thinks he's dead. Dead? Murdered. By me. He accused me. I, I was so frightened. Boy must be mad. He tried. I can't explain it. Um, I don't really understand it myself. Is it my fault? What do you want me to be to you, Robert? What do you want me to do? I just want you to be yourself. But that's not enough for you. How can I be more like her? No, don't say that. Whatever else you do, Alicia, do not try to be like Lady Audley. Well done, Phoebe.
fall asleep. Are you all right? A little weary. This business with Robert, I keep turning it over and over. You really are tired, aren't you? I'll write to my lawyer. He must know someone, someone discreet. Thank you. It isn't just your well-being or Robert's. I meant thank you for loving me. I will turn you inside out. I will know everything. And you can prove nothing. I'm certain of that. I'm trying to save you. You disappeared before. You could do it again. And you with me. What about poor Alicia? We have to put a stop to this, Robert, before it consumes us all. I have struggled too hard to sacrifice what I have won. My disappearance would crush Sir Michael. Despite what you may think, I love him. I never claimed to be blind to Sir Michael's position. I could only ever love a man who made me comfortable. But that does not mean my gratitude. My love is any less sincere. You disgust me. Then leave me and your uncle in peace. How do I threaten your interests? Make Alicia happy. It is unlikely that Sir Michael and I will have a child. He will inherit Woodley Court. Yes, and a murder goes unpunished. Many crimes go unpunished. How do you think the Audley family came by its estates? I will find proof. The evidence is there to convict you. A lock of hair. A baby shoe, a telegram, two samples of handwriting. My Robert, you have been busy. Yes, and who knows what else I might find in Yorkshire. I have seen people like you before. People who wander around, obsessively collecting and cataloguing knick-knacks to which they attribute some imaginary significance. I have seen them in the lunatic asylum. It is to be a fight to the death, then, my lady. Your choice, Robert. But I will promise you one thing. You will never have me. I would kill myself first. simple question. Am I still engaged or not? That is up to you. But Robert will never set foot in this house again. Father? As long as I live. But what has he done? You've got eyes, Alicia. Oh, yes. I've got eyes. I will not tolerate this. Go to your room, Alicia. Robert's behaviour, his behaviour is distinctly eccentric. Eccentric? I grew up with Robert. I know him better than anyone in the world. And yes, Robert has changed beyond recognition. And you are responsible for that change. Lucy! 
Lucky man, but it will take some weeks. Tell me about Captain Morgan. Ah, yes, put me to be sold up tomorrow. How much is the debt? Nine pounds. Nine pounds. Now, what about Captain Morgan? He used to rent our cottage. He had a daughter. Married a young cavalry officer. Ah, he up and left her, though. Of course, well, he had to provide for her. Just a week after the baby was born. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's not possible. <laughs> she were much pitied in the town. People all felt How long that... did uh, Captain Mulden and his daughter stay in Wildensea after her husband disappeared? No. Uh, them letters and things. See if you can find them in the next room. She tried giving music lessons. But she couldn't make a living. The little she did earn, her father drank away. Then one night, she just vanished. Aye, left a little lad with her father. We never saw them again. They headed down south. Your eyes are better than mine. We found them in the captain's furniture when we sold him up. Fortunes could certainly be better. Perhaps if George had known, he would not have deserted me. He's left me a prisoner in my own life. Under sentence, not of death, but of something far worse. Under sentence, not for death, but for something much the Darkness is closing worse. in, and I cannot endure it. Darkness is closing in, and I cannot endure it. Look after my child, since I cannot. Forgive me, Father, for you know the secret. Do you know the secret that has brought me to the brink of despair. despair? Your loving daughter, Helen. Secret? Everything will be well, or you will never see me again. Good evening, Mrs. Barkham.
shall be careful with the candle. Of course. Seems Sir Harry has deserted us, closed up, gone to the continent. Alicia, I'm going for a walk. Would you like to join me? No. Barclay. Don't worry. I bought their silence. That's not what I meant. No. No more lies. As you wish. Go to your room, Alicia. Robert. Lady Audley has a secret to confess. You have never asked to hear the story of my life. Perhaps you always suspected that it would be disagreeable. Lucy. Forgive me. At a very early age, I found out what it was to be poor. I grew older and learned that I was pretty. I realized that my ultimate fate in life depended upon my marriage, but that even the prettiest girl might wait a long time for a rich husband. <laughs> you were born rich, you can afford to despise me. But I knew how poverty can blight a life and looked forward with terror to my future. Then one day, I met George Talboys. He promised me the moon and the stars. What he gave me was poverty and misery. His father cut him off. That wasn't George's fault. I had a child and found myself plunged into a desperate depression. He had deserted me and I hated him. His father was rich. He had sisters living in luxury and respectability. I was his wife, the mother of his son. 
By what right did he condemn me to beggary and obscurity? What about your child? Alicia, please. Let her stay. She should know about the world outside these walls. I couldn't love my baby. No matter how hard I struggled, he was a weight dragging me down. I followed my brave husband's example and ran away. I became Lucy Graham. First a school teacher, then your governess. As God is my judge, I shall be a good wife to you. I might have succeeded. Had fate not intervened. Knowing George, you knew there could be no escape. Unless he could be induced into believing you were dead. Yes. That was when I found out what it meant to be rich. In Southampton, I found a mother. Poor, greedy, ready to agree to anything. I bought her girl from her. <coughs> My father went over to Ventnor and hired lodgings for his dying daughter and her little boy. She entered the house as Mrs. Talboys. She died and was buried under the same name. We registered her death and placed the advertisement in the Times. And there you have it. Lady Audley's secret. A pretty collection of self-interest. My secret? Do you want to know what I'm dreaming when I wake screaming in the night? You told me you loved me. Will you bear with me a little further? Will you at least understand me before you cast me out? Michael, do you want to know my secret? I told you that I couldn't love my baby. By leaving him with my father, I hope to erase myself from his memory so that at least he would never be haunted by his mother as I have been, by mine. I always thought she was dead. And one day, I was a child. My father was drunk. He brought me there. Then he told me the most dreadful thing of all. He told me that the madness was hereditary. those. You said yourself your child meant nothing to you. Lady Audley's ill. Take her to her room and allow her to excite herself by talking. Thorough. You disapprove? 
Who do you think I'm doing it for? I don't know. Who are you doing it for? Bob, you must forgive me. There's another service, Lady Audley, Miss Graham. I shall need someone, someone whose discretion I can rely upon to provide for safety and comfort. No scandal, Bob. I shall go up to London this afternoon, and if you need to contact me, I shall be at the Clarendon. I love her. With all my heart, Bob. I cannot say farewell to her. I can only pray that God may pity her. I know I can trust you. Isn't Lady Audley going with him? There is no Lady Audley. I want you to go with your father. Who, oh, Robert? I will join you later this year. But what about me? Where will we go? To London at first. And then to the continent? where we'll trail around the spas until Papa is dead, and I've turned into an embittered old spinster. Alicia. Rotting away like Lucy's mother. Your father was good to me, better than I ever deserved. I have always laughed at other people's sufferings. They seemed so small compared to my own. I should have been kinder to you. So you'd seek to prove the lady mad and therefore not responsible for her actions. And thus avoid the scandal of a chancery suit. The 
trouble is, there's no such thing as hereditary insanity. What about her mother? <laughs> Proves nothing. I think it's time I saw the lady. Is she restrained? I always assumed I was, because what I wanted, I was not born to. The resentment was like a fire in my brain. But in my heart, mm. I never felt mad. What I wanted always seemed reasonable. You believe you've done nothing wrong? You seem to me to be mad. Mad to want to be happy. Mad. To want to live comfortably. Mad. Mad to seek my happiness in the only place a woman could expect to find it. Mad in a way I've never before encountered. You are a monster. You have broken every convention that society holds sacred. You're cold, rational, remorseless, utterly unfeminine. Unfeminine. No one, Dr. Mosgrave, could accuse me of that. You are worse than insane. You are dangerous. Mr. Hordley, she's not fit to be in decent society ever again. I am just a woman. A weaker vessel. One thing you should know, Phoebe. I've never blamed you for anything. Take this. Oh, no. Yes. Don't show it to anyone. As soon as you can, just take it to London and sell it. Oh, thank you. I speculated that you might run away with me. I must confess I had imagined something more romantic. What is this place? It is a Maison de Santé. As of this moment, your life, so far as life is made up of action and variety, is finished. Whatever secrets you may have will be secrets forever. Swear, madame.
You have brought me to my living grave. As you brought George to his. George! I kept it! <laughs> Why not? It was valuable! <gasps> you have plucked my heart out and trodden it underfoot! Three years! I would have waited a lifetime for you! I would never have left you! You have to see! What's that? My wedding rings. Sir Michael's and George's. Do you want them too? Have you no shame? You have foully deceived two of the finest men ever to set foot on the earth. Since you could not possess me, you sought to govern me. On the pretext of protecting your family name, I will rot in these rooms until I die. The justification for my imprisonment is insanity. If I am to be deemed mad, kindly allow me the privileges of madness. It is a noble victory. Your uncle's life is ruined. It is you that has ruined it. And what about Alicia? You will marry her, of course, however little you deserve her. With me assigned to oblivion, there will be no one to come between you and Audley Court. Goodbye, Mr. Audley. Goodbye, my lady. I am not, and never would have been, your lady. Oh, hello, Bob. I hope you don't mind us making ourselves comfortable. I crawled out of the well and I managed to make my way to Brentwood. I found a surgeon who sent my arm and gave me a change of clothes. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I wasn't thinking terribly clearly. I went straight down to London and got on the first boat. I never wanted to see another human being. It's only thanks to Mary here. <laughs> Damn me, George. It's good to see you, but what about Lucy? Let her rot. I have to go and see her. Don't you see, George, I have to at least tell her that she's not a murderess. You assured me your staff would be trusted. I believe them to be. But when a patient is allowed to retain her jewelry... I haven't informed the police. Oh. So which of your staff was missing? None of them. Monsieur, I am certain of it. She received them from outside. There was a young lady who visited her. English. Fair head. Didn't you listen to a word she said? She was terrified. Terrified of ending up confined like her mother, and that's exactly what you did to her. What's happened to you, Alicia? Look at me, Robert. A bird in a gilded cage. 
Perhaps the only pleasure open to me was to set another bird free. Alicia, please. Forgive me. No, Robert. No, but please, you must understand that when I met Lucy... Robert, you're going to have to leave. Leave. Up for your living. As for me, I think I see the world for what it is. I have that at least to thank you for. Yeah. 